everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my June wrap up. It's going to be a weird one because I don't have many physical books to show you because I actually partook in Galleathon, which obviously was my readathon that happened while we read Net, 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 Net Galley books. And so most of these I don't have a physical copy of. And the ones that I did have a physical copy of, I've actually given loads of them away because I didn't actually enjoy them. The first book that I read this month was The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I read this as a buddy read with Connor and I was disappointed. This book is about a nanny who takes up a position in a house where she is looking after three children. And the book basically starts with one of the children is murdered and the nanny is in prison. And she's writing a letter to a potential lawyer explaining why she was not the murderer, murderer of this child and it couldn't possibly be her and she's telling her story of her time at the house. This house is creepy and things happen and they seem all seems very paranormal and she's telling her side of it all. My issue with this story was not the actual story itself, the actual story itself was very interesting. I just think first of all it wasn't thrillery enough for me, I thought it could have been a lot more, I don't know, thrillery. <laughs> it just didn't do it for me in that sense. It kind of felt like a really nice story and I loved the location, the house was gorgeous, the gardens they talked about were gorgeous, but the actual thriller part didn't do much for me. I didn't feel on edge at all or any suspense and that's kind of my main desire from a thriller. And so I did not give this very high, I gave this a two stars. I think yes, I might have been a little harsh, however the hype that's been around this book, everyone saying this is a five star book, it's incredible, I I just can't see it. And it put me in a right mood when I finished it because I was like, well, I'm sorry but how can I have missed this five star hype that everyone else seems to have on this book and not, and I'm not feeling it. I just did not see where that could have come from and I think I need to stop listening to booktube is very bad in terms of hyping up books and then i don't like them i just need to stop watching videos because every hyped book i end up not liking because they always seem so overhyped like oh, they're not that good i don't understand next i read daisy jones and the six by taylor jenkins reed another hyped book but this one rightly so this is a book about daisy jones who is a singer and the six who are a band and they are joining together to become one of the biggest groups of the time. And this is basically like a document told in book format of them discussing their lives through their big time when they were so famous and what happened to lead them to breaking up. First of all, nobody really warned me of the format that I was going into. And so for the first like 100 pages, I was like, when does this end? Because it was annoying me. And then I looked through and realised it doesn't end. So I kind of just came to accept it and I was like, okay, that's fine. I'm fine with it, that's cool. New format, I love that. And then from there I felt much better for it. All I needed to do was just accept that was the format and I ended up loving it. I gave this a four star overall. I thought it was really, really interesting, really fascinating. Not much of a plot point, it was just telling stories of these lives and I think it's very representative of Hollywood and what it is actually like to be famous and that was quite sad to see. I wouldn't want to live this life. I wanted to read this because Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and what a book and so I thought I want to read this too and genuinely I really really enjoyed it. I think it would definitely be one I would reread in the future and it's floppy which automatically I loved it. <laughs> a very good book. The next book that I read which I all read during my 24 hour readathon which I'll link up here by the way is Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. This book is about Queenie and her life dealing with love, self-respect, her race, her family, everything. Dealing with a big breakup with her boyfriend, I think his name was Tom, and how she goes about living her life and the mistakes she makes and the revelations she experiences. And it, it was hard hitting. As you can see, I uh, these are all my emotions throughout the book, and I had a lot. Uh, this kind of broke my heart. I did not expect to delve into, I knew it was about race and family and all that, so I knew it was going to be deep, but I did not expect to deep, go this deep, and it was deep. It was dark and twisty, but it was also light-hearted as well at times. 
and I really, really did enjoy it. I think this book was very, very essential. I gave it a four star, and the only reason I didn't give it five was because I hate the characters. There is not one character I like in this book. I don't think you were meant to hate every character, which was what made me give it a four star. I don't think the characters were well portrayed or when they were meant to make a redemption, I don't feel it was done very well. And don't get me wrong, Queenie's storyline is fabulous. But as a person, I still hated her and I still hated her friends and I still hated her family, every single one of them. And so I was like, I can't give this a four star because I hated it the whole way through. However, the actual book is so, so good. And I will hype this up to the gods because you all need to read this. Next, I read Shatter Me by Tara Murphy. Let's just say I won't be continuing. And the reason I don't have the physical book, even though I read it physically, is because that's already gone and it's not coming back. Nobody wants that. Okay, I understand that a lot of people love it because it's like a, it's like, you know, that teen fantasy thing that we all loved, but that's not it, sis. That is not the one, okay? I can deal with some good trash books. You know, Twilight, throw it at me, it's fine. You're bash Twilight, but not this. What are you doing? Now I know books are all about personal opinions. But my personal opinion is it's rubbish. <laughs> this book is about a girl with a power where if she touches someone, they die. Or they get severe pain. And then she continues, she'll kill them. And she is kept in this mental hospital. And then, oh, I, I, I don't even know what what territory spoilers are because the whole book is just a jumble to me right now we're just gonna leave it there it's not a good <laughs> book i gave it a two star because it wasn't the worst thing i've ever read and it wasn't offensive or anything like that so i wasn't gonna give it a one star but two star is it's really cutting it quite close because it was not good <laughs> More like a 1.5. I'm sorry if this is your favourite series of all time. I know a lot of people love it. I just don't get that love from it, okay? And that's okay, that's fine. You do you, boo. But the book's already gone and it won't be coming back. No. Next, I read Room 119 by Trev Lintz, or TF Lintz, I think the book is under. I just found out it's not actually Room 119. It's 119. But Room 119 sounds good, doesn't it? I actually don't have my copy because I gave it to my granddad to read because I thought he'd really, really enjoy it and he is enjoying it, so that's fabulous. Uh, but that's why I don't have my copy with me. This book is about a man called Dean and Dean is a stocks trader. And for the first 80 pages, you see his life. He's not the best man. He doesn't really have much time for family. His life revolves around work and then he loses a lot of money. A lot of money and it all kind of goes with tits up and you see Dean be put into a situation where he needs to change and I'm it, that sounds so simple of a plot line it is not like that I'm sure you're sick of me talking about this book at the, now because I've been on live streams talking about it I post videos talking about it I've done a dedicated review I've done it all so I'm sure you're all sick of me. However, you have to read that book to understand. Now I'm not saying it's everyone's cup of tea because I really don't think it is everyone's cup of tea, but it is definitely my giant cup of tea. I don't really like tea. It's my giant cup of coffee. It doesn't really have the same ring to it, does it? Huh. But that doesn't matter. It's fabulous and I think you all need to give it a read. I gave it a five stars. Next, I read The Anti-Virginity Pact by Katie Wisma. This, I think it's released now, it's definitely released now. It released on 16th of June. Katie Wisma is a YouTuber, for all of you who don't know, so gotta support YouTubers books, booktubers books, go and support them. This book is about a girl who, she's got these typical 16 year old issues and she and her friend sign a pact to lose their virginities by the end of the school year or by the time they graduate or something. And this gets blown around the school. People find out about it, her life's kind of ruined. I don't want to say too much about it, it's not really focused on that at all. I know the book is called that, but it's not really that, it's not the main focus at all. The main focus is her life and teenage struggles. The first half of the book was a bit hit or miss. I wasn't going to DNF it, but I wasn't happy with it, and I was like, this is not the best. 
second half was incredible five star worthy i thoroughly enjoyed it so overall i gave it a four star i thought it was a really really good book i've seen a lot of harsh criticisms on it and i didn't think they were justified thought it was a really really good book and i enjoyed it personally and i'll be getting myself a final copy next i read cinderella is dead by kaylin byron i know this is super hyped once again me and hyped books just don't get on and the concept to me was incredible you know it's 200 years later after cinderella is, has died and within the city or the town they are honoring cinderella by going to a ball and the women of the ball have to be chosen by a man to not die essentially or be sent to the barrows or something and one year our protagonist whose name i can't remember that's really good isn't it that just shows how much i like that book she is like i'm gonna overthrow the monarchy and i'm like yes sis she uh has a girlfriend and her and her girlfriend obviously can't be together because that is against the rules in this cut in this city city town city mm. And she doesn't want to get married and her girlfriend's like, well, I'm getting married because I don't want to die. So that's on you, sis. And so she goes on her own and she's like, I'm going to do it. And the concept was incredible. However, the first half of the book is so boring and long and it's, it's a journey. So I could understand, but it, it was long and I was bored. And then we got to the second half and, you know, I picked up just a little... But I was like, come on, I need some action. And then finally we had the action scene right at the end. And it was over. There was no rest. There was no like struggle. There was nothing happening. It was just whoop, resolution. And I was like, hang on, wait, what? And I, I'm not kidding when I say I skipped back. I think it was 30 pages trying to check what I'd missed because I I was like, I've missed something. I've, I've skipped some pages. I'm on my Kindle. Easily done. No, I hadn't missed anything. It was just resolved that quickly. When I say I was in shock, I was in shock because this book was so hyped and I no one had mentioned this quick action scene. And so I thought, well, I must be being dramatic, but but it was, it was not. It was just ended and there was a resolution and I was like, cool. Great. So that only got a two star from me. It certainly wasn't a bad book. It just, it just is not worth that hype for me personally. I didn't think it was well staged as i described it in my goodreads review and i don't mean this offensive in any way but it felt like a draft of a book that hadn't yet been gone over and expanded in certain areas and broken down in others it felt like a first draft and that is not what you want a book to feel like and i know this is suddenly a number one bestseller so she's obviously doing something right and i'm just not vibing with it and that's okay but i'm not vibing with it i'm just waiting for the hate that i'm gonna get <laughs> however i did have one fabulous read during galleathon and that was beach read by emily henry oh i love this book i'm definitely gonna get a final copy this is about a writer who goes to a summer house because they are struggling to read and there they meet a fellow writer and they decide to swap writing styles for a summer and see who can get published first on a bet and there's stakes to it and things that's the premise it is so much more than that and there's so much more to it it's a romance obviously so i'm sure you can guess what's happening in there it was so nice oh they were so so cute together and i just want to reread it already i'm really really glad i read that book and i hope you all read it too because that was so so sweet oh i don't have much to say five star fabulous then i read when life gives you mangoes by kareen gretton this was a middle grade that I accept that I like requested really last minute because I saw Books of Claire talking about it and she said how good it was. So I was like, I'll give that little request. The I didn't read the summary. This was so deep and good. It follows the adventures. It's, it's like a town in England, but to me, I imagined it somewhere really different. It did not. I don't know about anyone else that read this, but is it, when is it based and where is it based? Because they talk about going to London or something but it sounds the place they describe like rainforest and stuff i think i'm confused but the actual book i'm not going to tell you anything about it because i think you need to go in blind but it was incredible the stories that were told and the messages that were explained and the dark twist dark for a middle eight grade 
that was something else. If you have not read that book, like if you've got Net Galley and you can request it, or if you ha aren't planning on getting it when it comes out, I suggest you change your mind because that was a fabulous book and that cover is stunning. I'm putting it somewhere. Gorgeous. I then read Death on the Beach by Anna Johansson. I say read, I DNF'd, and I would never normally rate a DNF book. However, I got quite a long way in and it's on NetGalley. I think you have to really re you have to review them to get the arc, to get the percentage that you need. This is a book about a murder happens or suicide happens on this island beach and obviously it doesn't look like a suicide, it's a murder. And so this detective goes to this island to investigate the murder. But when she's there, she finds out the whole island is very religious and to the point where it's almost like a cult. And I don't know if the, if the story turns to the fact it's a cult because I didn't quite get there, but it definitely gave me cult vibes, so I don't know. It could have just been a very, very, very sacred religion, but it was an interesting religion. I don't think it was based off any re real religion, but it was dark. There was nothing wrong with this book, nothing wrong with it at all. It just was kind of boring me. It was very traditional. I didn't really want to know who did it in the end. I wasn't bothered. Connor, I'll say it just for Connor. I didn't care. I just don't care. Just for Connor. When I looked at some other reviews, a lot of people said it's very predictable. It's exactly what you think is going to happen. And I was like, I don't even know what's going to happen because I haven't even been bothered to think about an outcome because I just really wasn't invested enough in it. Um, the actual detective had a very interesting storyline. I saw there was like you saw her home life and her detective life, and she was a great character. I enjoyed her. Um, just overall, the story was a little bit basic for me, so I gave that a two star. However, I just want to say that was not a bad story, and I did not quite finish it. So take that with a pinch of salt. I would never normally review a book I've DNF'd. And then the final book that I actually completed during June, which is disgraceful, was Beneath the Sugar Sky by Shauna Maguire. I love this series so much. Oh my god, this series is everything. I actually only gave this one a four star. But my reasoning was because we had a lot of new characters and I didn't actually like the new characters at all. So I, you know, they kind of ruined it a little bit for me. However, overall, I still love the story. Still love this series. Can't wait to read the next two. We follow Sumi's daughter. Sumi from the first one. But I can't say it because there's a spoiler. Okay. So I can't actually tell you the plot because spoilers. <laughs> but they basically go to a nonsense land which has everything made of candy and there's the candy makers and then there's the queen of candy or something and it follows a lot of that. I can't say anymore because it will spoil it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was my least favourite in the series so far but it was still a four star and it was still amazing. I just didn't like the new characters, that's all. And I just paper cut myself on the thing oh man well now you're getting a three star just for that i dnf two other books this month i dns the last the last day by andrew hunter murray and this was something i was very really excited for it is a dystopian about where the world stops turning half of the earth is stuck in frozen time so it's freezer no stuck in ice it's like frozen they're in the dark the other side is stuck in burning sun it's boiling hot um and i was really excited for it and i only got something like less than 100 pages in but the writing style was not for me the actual story was completely different like they had buses and trains and helicopters so they built a society in this world and that wasn't for me i like a dystopian where it's like completely gone the whole world's in uproar there's no system and this one was not like that. It was like a developed world within this catastrophe and there was a secret to be found. Wasn't for me, so I did decide to DNF that. I also decided to DNF The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That is absolutely not what I decided to DNF. The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Uh, I decided to DNF this because I think I was something ridiculous, like 30 pages in. And I could not have been more bored or hated a book more. And I was I was struggling anyway. And I was like, I don't really want to read this. Eh. So I put it on Twitter and I was like, do I just DNF it? And everyone was like, oh my God, yes, save yourself the time and effort, girl, because you won't like it. And it's fat phobic and all this stuff. So I was like, cool, bye. It's already gone. 
I've passed it on. So we did have quite a few DNFs. But more than DNFs, we also had books that I started and never quite finished. So first of all, we have City of Ashes, and I'm actually listening to the audiobook, not the physical, so I have no idea where I am, but I think I think about 100 pages. I started this the first day of June, and so the fact that I haven't even progressed since the first day is disgraceful. However, I hate these books. If anyone knows, I absolutely hate them. I'm just reading, well, I hate the first one. I'm just reading it to get to the newer um, Shadowhunter books that are apparently good. And so I'm really trying my best to get through these. They are really, in my opinion, terrible with terrible characters that I really hate. And so I haven't got any further through that. I will try my best. It's continuing this month. I also was supposed to read The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jules for this little booktuber group we have where we just read a book every month. This month we're reading My Dark Vanessa. Last month we were supposed to read The Family Upstairs. I got to page 57. <laughs> I really wanted it and then I saw some reviews and I, I had it off Connor ages and ages ago for my birthday I think and that was in April. And I saw then saw some reviews on it and people saying this is not what it was advertised as. And what I thought it was was what the description says, where there's a girl in the attic or a girl in the nursery who's well looked after. She her nappy's been changed and everything, and then all the family have been murdered. So who's looking after the baby? But no, it's actually about that girl twenty five years later inheriting the house. And I'm sure this mystery comes into it somehow, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted the thriller of a detective finding out who had been looking after the baby for that long. And so I was really miffed to find out that wasn't the case. So I was demotivated going into it. So I have only got to chapter nine and I've obviously, people were discussing the book today and I was like, just don't look, don't, don't look, I'm sorry. I don't think I outrightly told them I haven't read it. I've just pretended I don't exist. Sorry guys, sorry. <laughs> um, but I'm going to try and continue this month, but this is one of those ones that I haven't decided if I'm actually going to continue reading or if I'm going to put it down, pick it up in the future. I'm also in the middle of Black Girl Unlimited, which I am listening to on audio. I started this just before Galeathon started and I didn't have time to finish it. I have like three hours left of the audiobook, I think, and I listen to it on three times speed, so it'll take an hour. I just haven't quite sat down and done that yet. Um, really enjoying it so far. Really good story. I'm excited to see where that goes. I am 50 something percent into Echo by R.C. Glenn. This is a self-published book that the author um, contacted me about reading a month or two months maybe ago and I started reading it in June but I haven't finished it so it'll be in my July wrap-up but I wanted to let everyone know that I am in the middle of reading that. It is very good so far, not what I expected, completely different, actually involves and oh I actually can't say that, is that a spoiler? No. I mean yeah. No? And the final one that I am not really in the middle of, I've just started and it's sat there, is When I Was Ten, which me and Connor meant to buddy read and I'm pretty sure Connor is just finishing it right this second as I film and I'm 10% in because I've been in a reading slump since Galeathon and really struggled to read, hence being in the middle of so many books and not finishing them, just trying my best here. I really really hope you enjoyed today's video, uh, I hope you found some book recommendations or some things to avoid which is usually the case with my videos, I'm always like, just don't touch it. <laughs> uh, if you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!